when you make decisions about your business, make them coming from the belief of your success and believing in your vision and mission and don't let yourself make decisions from fear and disbelief. Like as we talked earlier, we all have those moments where we don't believe in someone, which is fine and it's normal, but you don't want to make decisions or big changes in your business from that. You want to bring yourself to that belief is, no, what I'm doing is right. What I'm doing is ex it's going to work and so on, because then you move your brain from like the survival mode where you really don't have access to strategic thinking to the strategic, creative, executive thinking and then your solutions and ideas will be so much better and more powerful. I'm Janet Ahmed, host of Hacks and Hobbies podcast and a digital presence advisor at HumbleZone. This episode is brought to you by Home Studio Mastery. I launched a consultation and course program to help podcasters and course creators to create a space in their homes that will reduce the friction of creating content and appearing their best when showing up on camera. The pandemic gave us a lot of issues, but this one is here to stay. We're now so much closer to our audience thanks to video becoming more popular and affordable. I help guide folks who want to create Hollywood-worthy studios to not only capture great content, but also build more confidence, more authority, and be more comfortable in front of the camera. If I can do it, you can too. And with my help, you can do it faster. So if you'd like to learn more, visit homestudiomastery.com and how you too can create a home studio that brings out your personality, professionalism, and possibilities. Thank you for tuning in to Hacks and Hobbies with your host, Junaid. We're visited by our amazing guests coming from all walks of life who want to learn their story, their struggles, and their journey on how they got to where they are today. So stick around. Welcome to another exciting episode of Hacks and Hobbies, the podcast that explores the journeys and stories of remarkable individuals. Today, we have a very special guest, Maggie. In this episode, we dive deep into Maggie's podcasting journey her origin story, and the passion that drives her. Get ready for an inspiring conversation filled with insights and wisdom. So without further ado, let's jump right in. Maggie, thank you so much for coming on to the podcast. Yeah, thank you so much for having me tonight. Maggie, one of the first things that I like to ask my guests is, why do you podcast and what has it done for you? So in terms of my own podcast, when I launched it, I launched it not that long ago, like a year ago, year and a half, I guess by now. Mm -hmm. And why I started, because I really wanted to put my message out there in terms of what I believe in and what I'm all about. And then I had people who listened to either my trainings or listened to read whatever I wrote, they were like, you would be so great at podcasts, you should do it. <laughs> and I started thinking about it. I was like, you know what? Yeah. Why not? And that yeah. kind of what led me. And then also being a guest, I just also love to meet people and have conversations with fellow podcasters, fellow leaders, entrepreneurs. And, and through that, just, yeah, meet people, spread the word, the message that I have. So I guess that's why. I love it. Thank you so much for coming on to my podcast and hanging out with me here uh, on Hacks and Hobbies. I'll, I like to take our guests through or share with the audience the journey and the origin story of our guests, because we have all have a story. Mm -hmm. We all came through a journey and we've learned so many different things over that period of time. It's not the destination that yeah. you, they say it's all about the journey. Because yes. It just, it defines who you are. It, it's just beautiful. Mm -hmm. Actually, I lost words. <laughs> it's, yes, it's okay. My, so my husband is a singer songwriter and he has this song that he wrote and it's all about the journey. So it's funny mm. you say that. <laughs> it's, it's a I'm going to have to go check out that song because one of my favorite bands is Journey. Oh, there you go. <laughs> don't, don't Stop Believing. That's one of my favorite songs. Yes. Maybe that should yes. be a question in my in your podcast. Question on my podcast why not 
talk about movies. <laughs> All right. So Maggie, walk us through your origin story or basically walk through memory lane. What was some of the defining moments that enabled you to say, this is what I want to do for the rest of my life? This is what I want to do because I want to help others. I want mm -hmm. to enable people mm -hmm. to see what's really possible. Well, actually, somebody asked me that question at some point this year saying, what do you ever, what did you want to do when you were a child? And I remember I wanted to be a teacher and yeah. not just because my parents come a little bit from that teaching, but like, I just love to, I thought that through teaching, I can empower people, whether they were mm -hmm. children or whatever, and, and help them grow. Yeah. But I am Polish originally, so I was born in Poland and their communist regime still, I'm probably like the last generation that remembers it. Mm. And seeing my mom being a teacher and really like financially, it wasn't a big struggle in a terms where we always had food and roof sure. under our, over, over us. Yeah. But there wasn't much more left. And it was always like counting the money when I thought maybe being a teacher in Poland is not a great idea. <laughs> <laughs> Once I grew up. Mm -hmm. So then when when I came out of university and started having jobs and so on, Poland was going through a lot of reforms after the yeah. communist regime collapsed. And that wasn't easy. There was a high unemployment. I was making $300 a month and I was thinking, I'm going to go far with that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so mm -hmm. that's what led me to immigrate to Canada. I don't want to say a whole story because we don't have time sure, here, sure. but that's what led me to immigrate to Canada. And enter the corporate world mm -hmm. in Canada. And through my growth in the corporate world, and very quickly, I became a people leader and then really had a lot of experience in many different areas, but I've mm -hmm. always had people, I've led people. And there was a couple of times in my career when I didn't, and that's when I realized that I was missing that, that it was something that I always enjoyed to yeah. actually coach my teams, my team members help them grow within their roles. And then outside of it, that's how I truly discovered like, hey, this is my passion. And what led me to start my coaching business yeah. was partially a burned out in a corporate world. <laughs> and partially through that burned out, really thinking through and realizing that the more I grew in the corporate world, the less of what I wanted to do, I was doing, meaning coaching uh, and developing people. And yeah. the more I was being thrown at just fixing things and extinguishing fires that sure. I might've been good at, but it's just, I didn't enjoy it. It was mm -hmm. depleting me and stressing me out rather than it was giving me more and more energy. And that yeah, kind of led to, but I'm just going to go on my own and yeah. do what I'm passionate about help people grow. And because I also love business, I think it's creative and I have all kinds of experience and education in it. I truly love it. I merged that and became a business coach. <laughs> so that's. <laughs> no, I, I love that. A lot of people that I've spoken to, they got burned out and they found a way to not only enrich their lives, but also enrich the lives of the people that they're working with, the clients. Yeah. And when you mentioned in, in corporate world, yes, you are enabled to climb the corporate ladder, but it doesn't mean that it's also you climbing your heart's ladder because now right. you're ended up you're ending right. up doing work that you're not that doesn't keep you in the genius zone. You That's know, right. You're, you're in a incompetent right. zone more more like. That's right. That's right. I agree. I agree. And my genius zone is really working with people and helping them grow and, and yeah. enabling them right through yeah. different things. Yeah. So you grew up in Poland, you came to Canada, mm -hmm. you walked the corporate path and you're mm -hmm. like, this is not happening for me. How can we teach the upcoming, the upcoming generation? For example, I have four kids and I, I saw that you also have four kids. Um, they're anywhere from 12 year old, 12 years old to six month old. Mm -hmm. So these are kids, they're going to be entering the workforce, so to say, mm -hmm. in the next decade or so, mm -hmm. if not mm -hmm. any sooner. How do we teach them that the corporate is not the only way? 
definitely we can lead by example right? <laughs> because <laughs> you and I we have our own businesses and our kids see that and I always believe that the only way you can be a leader is by leading by example so they already mm. see that but if you're not in that position just being open and even maybe educating yourself as a parent that there are yeah. other ways to be professionally successful let's just mm -hmm. call it this way other than being part of a corporation and for me what I learned as a parent so I was raised in that mindset and it's funny because my dad has been an entrepreneur most of his life and he was always like you gotta go to a good school and finish the school and then go and do corporate and so on meanwhile he spent all his life being an entrepreneur actually pretty yeah. successful even in Poland yeah. so with my kids, I let go of that expectation of being the best student because that's what was expected of me. And even though I don't think I was under a huge pressure, but that was like kind of expectation. So I just, yeah. good student, Maggie, just lived up to that. But let go of that and let them be who they are and not push them too hard be demanding in a sense where I see your potential and I'm not going to let that go just as I'm a coach for my clients I see yeah. your highest potential and I'm not going to let you low ball yourself but at the same time not put that unhealthy expectation mm. because of the way we we're right so letting them grow and letting them explore their passion and trust and believe that you can actually be professional, successful with things you're passionate about, even if they don't match your like typical yeah. corporate world, right? You don't have to be a lawyer or a doctor or a certain corporate finance person sure. to be successful professionally. There's so many other ways. You're absolutely right. That's why there's so many different professions that people can pick and choose mm -hmm. and are working in and making a living that's keep making keeping them happy yeah. and then one thing that i want to add is that i heard that statistic somewhere and i can't say where that really 80 percent of technology hasn't been invented yet therefore if you think about the jobs that our kids might have we might yeah. even not know that they exist because they haven't been invented right, yet yeah. so being open to that that we mm -hmm. truly live in a time that's very disruptive there's a lot of changes and innovation happening and our mm -hmm. kids will come to the market where there will be jobs we don't know anything about even like coaching right my parents yeah. have no idea what i'm doing right <laughs> <laughs> they can't comprehend it they can't comprehend it and you, you're so right because <laughs> i'm subscribed to this thing called force foresight institute and they're always future pacing and future technologies mm -hmm. and talking about what's coming in the future and if we look ourselves at the job market social media marketer did not exist a decade ago right? and There's look how where it's come. it is now yeah, yeah exactly so important. exactly i love it i love it maggie what kept you inspired and motivated as you built your business, as you created the reality for others that they didn't think that was possible? What keeps me inspired and motivated, first of all, knowing truly that this is the right thing for me. I, and, and that was like an intuition, right? Sometimes that you feel, and I've had that in my like transitional moments of my life, like mm -hmm. knowing that I wanted to move to Canada, that was the right move, even though I've never been to Canada, never yeah. flew a plane, never been to North America, I didn't know much. And yet it was just, you know what, I think that's right for me, I'm going to mm -hmm. try, right? So this was this one of those moments when like, don't get me wrong, I enjoyed my corporate career. I actually had a good career, except for that burnt out moment, but it wasn't yeah. like systemic, right? It's just like point in time, whatever it happened. But that made me realize, and I had some thoughts before, like when I think about it, but they were yeah. so distant and I suppressed them so much that they just bubbled in that burnt out moment yeah. where I just knew, okay, this part of my life is over and I need to go somewhere else and I know it's right for me. And so it created that long-term belief that I can be successful 
And that through that, I can help my clients be successful. So even if there are moments where I don't believe that and nothing <laughs> is working and I'm like, this is what am I doing? Yeah. But when I connect to that long-term belief, it's, no, this is my passion. This is exactly what I'm supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm. And then I keep going. And then, and, and of course, having some good habits, self-discipline and the concept of I'm committed to my business and my clients hundred percent. And it's not even just about me. It's also about them yeah. and not letting them down. It just keeps me going. Even if I feel like shit. <laughs> Very small. No, you're absolutely right. It's very important to, for our sanity, right? You, you see those results. You see our clients and our students, so to say, come back to us and tell us how transformative their life yeah. has become. Yes. And it's like reinvigorating yes. what we're doing. Yes. So definitely that guy, sometimes going back to that, right? Keeping yeah. those emails or keeping those testimonials and that helps you. But if they don't, because, and don't get me wrong, majority of the time, like I really love yeah. growing my business and I'm so happy I did that. But again, there are some tough moments out there and that's just reality of being an entrepreneur. So there are moments where that helps, but there's moments where that doesn't. So then just knowing that what I'm doing is right and that yeah. for me, and that's my path that keeps me going as well. I love it. That's so powerful. Let's take a quick break, Maggie. And when we get back, first of all, thank you so much for sharing your journey, your story, the inspirations and motivations, and taking us back to what was really important for you and what enabled you to actually make that change for yourself. Because sometimes we're not even able to make the change, but it, it at some point, it had, like like you said, you were pushing those feelings down, but eventually they bubbled up enough like a volcano. Mm -hmm. No, this is not happening. So let's take a quick five minute break. And when we get back, we'll share three hacks to take away. All right. I'm Janet Ahmed, host of Hacks and Hobbies podcast and a digital presence advisor at HumbleZone. This episode is brought to you by Home Studio Mastery. I launched a consultation and course program to help podcasters and course creators to create a space in their homes that will reduce the friction of creating content and appearing their best when showing up on camera. The pandemic gave us a lot of issues, but this one is here to stay. We're now so much closer to our audience thanks to video becoming more popular and affordable. I help guide folks who want to create Hollywood-worthy studios to not only capture great content, but also build more confidence, more authority, and be more comfortable in front of the camera. If I can do it, you can too. And with my help, you can do it faster. So if you'd like to learn more, visit homestudiomastery.com and how you too can create a home studio that brings out your personality, professionalism, and possibilities. Hey guys, welcome back. We've been talking with Maggie Perrotin. She's from Poland. She's She moved to Canada. She's an amazing coach. She's got some amazing testimonials as I checked out her website earlier today. Maggie, thank you so much for hanging out with us. Go ahead with your three hacks to share for our superpreneurs. Three hacks to share. So... First thing, I guess, when you make decisions about your business, make them coming from the belief of your success and believing in your vision and mission and don't let yourself make decisions from fear and disbelief. As we talked earlier, yeah. we all have those moments where we don't believe in someone, which is fine and it's normal, but you don't want to make decisions or big changes in your business from that. <laughs> you want to bring yourself to that belief is, no, what I'm doing is right. What I'm doing is ex it's going to work and so on, because then you move your brain from like the survival mode where you really don't have access to strategic thinking yeah. to the strategic, creative, executive thinking. And then 
your solutions and ideas will be so much better and more powerful. So that's one. Nice. <laughs> I love it. I love that. Then tip number two, create good habits for your day-to-day and yourself. Like it's sometimes so easy to get distracted, especially if you're working from home. A lot of us do. And then there is a pet then the kids and this and that going on. And when you can actually focus and you know how to prioritize and then empower yourself with some good habits in your day to day, you can accomplish and move your business so much faster and so much more in a little time. So then you don't have to compensate by the lack of focus and getting distracted and not having priorities by working more and hustling and overworking. Mm. So that that's makes so much two. Sense. Number three, and this is because I'm a coach and I see that in my clients, truly invest in your business skills. You are the leader of your business. When you started the business, you decided whether it was intentional or not to be its CEO. And a lot of people start their business because they're passionate about something, right? whatever service they deliver or whatever product Mm -hmm. they create, which is awesome. Otherwise we would never have business owners, right? But at the same time, if you want to scale your business and really reach your vision and make an impact you want to make, there are some business foundations that you need and don't delay or be scared of learning those skills. They will serve you forever. They will make you hundreds of thousands more dollars down the line and save you a lot of time, frustration, and stress. So those are my three tips. Oh my God. That is, those are really powerful tips down and and put them on my board over here so I can pay attention (laughs) and be focused and be making good habits. It's so important. Mm -hmm. I love it. Mm -hmm. one of the habits that I've done is taking friction away from my podcast production. And it's taken a huge weight off my shoulders. Mm -hmm. And as a podcast host, it's not easy to publish and, and record and do all of those tasks. It's not easy. So having a team has helped me so much. And Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if you know my story, but I, when I started a podcast, I was like, hey, I can do this by myself. Mm-hmm. I'm a techie. I've been dealing with software for a long time. I'm mm-hmm. just going to edit my own episodes. And it was got so bad that I got myself fired from a job. And then I was unemployed for nine <laughs> months. But I was like, okay, next time around, I'm going to bring a team on. And even though I didn't have a job, I was like, I still need somebody mm-hmm. that can help me. Mm-hmm. move forward because if I have a team in place, not only I'm putting more energy, but I'm also mm-hmm. getting energy back into the business because now instead of one person working on the business, there's two or three people mm-hmm. working on it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I think the long and short of it, having good habits and having good systems in place yes. is so important. It is. It is. Saves a lot of time. <laughs> yes, And does. then stress and leaves you have the really gives you the ability to work more on your business not in your business and keep growing it and keep making it better and yeah i think the the cool part is you're then able to relax and spend more time with more quality time not just more time more quality time with the family yes being parents and having kids it's so important to, to be present with them exactly Exactly. And not keep thinking about all the things you still need to do, all the things that didn't go well or whatever. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. I love it. All right, Maggie, are you ready for the rapid fire questions? Okay, let's go. All right, let's do this. <laughs> Number one, what is the one hobby that you wish you got into? Dancing. Oh, more dancing. Yes. Yes. More dancing. Yes. What type of dancing? To... Any specific ones? You know, what? I would love to learn hip hop. So I used to mm. dance a little bit when I was a teenager, but that was more like Polish folk and a bit of contemporary, but nowhere near even amateurish professional dancer. Sure. But I love seeing hip hop. I would love yeah. that. <laughs> I think it's too much fun. <laughs> I think because you have a business and some time, I think you should look into some hip hop yeah, classes. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> 
the, your kids are going to be like, mom, what are you doing? I'm learning hip hop. Let's do this. Yeah. yeah. My daughter will be like, oh, mom, she's dancing because she wanted. She'll be like, okay, no, mom. <laughs> I can't do this. <laughs> I love it. Next up. What did you want to be when you were a child? A teacher. A teacher. That's yes. right. You mentioned that earlier. And yeah. you are a teacher and a coach helping I am. so many people. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> Number three, what is your favorite movie or TV show? Ooh, you know what? I am a huge fan of, there's many, but like lately, of course, Avatar, I need to see the second one. I yes. loved the first one. So I love fantasy movies. So Lord mm. of the Rings, I love mm. the books and I love the movies, but definitely Avatar lately. But of course, there's other movies that I love, like Hidden Figures, for example, mm. amazing movie. There's, yeah. So I can't name this one. <laughs> there's too many. <laughs> We'll put down Lord of the Rings trilogy for your favorite movie. That's it. Let's do that. <laughs> awesome. Number four, what movie would you choose if you got to play a character in it? It's mm, a good one. Um, I don't know. Wonder Woman. Let's go. There you go. Superheroes. Wonder Woman in the house. <laughs> Wonder Woman. That's right. <laughs> Wonder Woman. If you, who is your favorite superhero? Yeah, I guess Wonder Woman is Wonder favorite. Woman, it's right? Superhero. Yeah. <laughs> Sweet. That was easy. Last one. If you were a board game, what would it be? If I was a board game, that's a tough one. Some sort of, you know what? Some sort of like mystery finding mm. treasure, some sort of detective. Like talking about favorite books. I yeah. love the love detective type of movie. Sherlock mm. Holmes reading okay. the books and then yeah. John Grisham's books, like mm. the lawyer detective thing. So yeah, I guess yeah, it would yeah. be something, something in those lines. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I know. I know. Figuring out solutions, words. right? And problems. Clue, That's the thing. Clue That's would be mean. one of them. Clue? Clue. Clue. Okay. Yeah. I yeah. never played that one. Yes. You got to check it out. It's pretty fun. Okay. You got to find, you basically looking for clues to figure out who murdered the one mm -hmm. person who's died. There's six players and who's. Okay. You know, okay. To clue it. Maggie, thank you so much for your time, energy, your wisdom, your tips, and your hacks for our superpreneurs. This was a lot of fun. Where can my superpreneurs find you? So the best way to find me is on my website, which is stairwaytoleadership.com. One word, stairwaytoleadership.com. Or my podcast, it's called Diamond Effect. And it's for business owners as well. So it's available on probably the platform you're that. listening to this exactly. podcast so diamond effect is my podcast awesome we'll be sure to include the links to the show notes so people can get reach out to you and listen to your podcast mm -hmm. thank you again so much and we'll catch you in the next episode thank you so much for having me Janine. it's been a pleasure and thank you for listening everybody thank you everyone for listening thank you for listening to hacks and hobbies you can find additional information on the guest today on their website, hacksandhobbies.com. Please feel free to subscribe to the podcast so you don't miss out on upcoming interviews with amazing guests.